What I want to achieve from this process is to raise self-esteem and aspirations in particular children. So it's the boys in the class who attention seek, who aren't engaged in the topics. And it's the girls who are very quiet. They don't cause any problems, but they don't really draw any attention to themselves. They just sit under the radar. So I think I want to do this project to see if I can draw those individual children into the whole class and engage with the work. I'm really interested in your take on them to see if they would be helpful at all, if they're interesting to you. So this is a little bit about the are you mad, are you making a difference process. The cycle really is not so different from the plan, do and review cycle that you would do with children. Mm -hmm. And I suppose with this, what we were trying to do is to get the children to generate their own success criteria. So a key question the teacher can ask is, what's important to you? Because as soon as I ask a question, say Claire, for example, sorry, sorry. if I said to you, um, what's important to you about your children's learning? I would say it's really important to raise self-esteem in the boys, to yeah. get rid of the negative attention-seeking behaviour and allow the girls who are maybe quiet and don't contribute. Right. And immediately when I ask the question, what's important to you, does that generate a sense of aspiration for yourself that you'd actually like to try and achieve this? Yeah. If I asked you why is that important, can you think of anything? Because I think it would make a difference to their lives overall for like a long time. It's not something that's just going to be a short fix. Well, it's a it's like a life, thing, yeah, it's life, like a lifelong life skill. Really. Yeah. Right. Some teachers went with Helen Walker on a British Council funded research trip to Melbourne looking at developing aspirations and resilience in children. When we got back from Australia, a few of us tried putting some of those elements into the class, but Helen went away and she really looked at it alongside the Shelley Rose Chauvet language work and put them together to come up with the Are You Mad 2 cycle of developing a project around what's important to the children. So Claire, I asked you what was important about your children. You said um, about the girls and the boys and the behaviour and the quiet children. So, you know, in repeating that back to, to you to say that I've heard you, I would use your language and say, so, you know, you want the very best, uh, roughly, the very best for your children and you want them to succeed in the future. And can you notice the yes um, that Claire said there? And, it, <laughs> and that's called getting the yes because I've repeated what she said. People can answer in two ways. They can say what they do want like you've said what you do want, or they can answer what they don't want, and some people do that. They might say, well, what I don't want is for these children to, you know, fall out of school, not succeed, you know, get into trouble. It's important that you actually sort of mirror and respond and, and actually show that you value and have heard what that person said. What we'll do is just listen to Shelley Rose Chave talk about this. Think about the last time you took a vacation. Did you take a vacation because you wanted to go to do some things? Was that the motivation? Or did you take a vacation because you needed to get away? Can you see those are two different motivation triggers. How do you find that bus stop where they're waiting? Ask your children, what, what do you want? Or what's important to you? Why is that important? If they're moving towards, they'll say, well, it's important to me because I want to gain this, or that will permit me to do that. If they're moving away from, what they're going to say is, well, it's important because I don't want this other problem. So what you're listening for is what I want or what I don't want. So that question, why is that important to you, is an important question to enable you to find out what is the bus stop. There's eight stages to the Are You Mad 2 program. So stage one is about just getting started, finding out what's important to the children.
anyone tell me what's important to you about the ancient Greeks? Lauren, what do you want to I happen wanna, in this topic? Like, to find out what they used to make jewellery with, like, with their clothes and stuff. So you want to find out more about jewellery and information on the Greeks. Why? Why is that important? Because I hadn't saw them in the museum. So. Right, you didn't see them in the museum, so therefore you would like to find that out. Right, okay. Children are very much used to, you know, this is our topic, this is what we're going to do this week, this is what you're going to find out, this is what you're going to produce to show me you found out, this is what your independent learning is, that's it. Whereas if they say to you, this is what interests me, this is why it interests me, they're more likely to remember it, they're more likely to be much more enthusiastic. In stage two, you would look at the mad ideas, so asking them to generate what ideas they've got for making a difference. Right, so we've talked about what's important to you about telling stories and what's important to you about the ancient Greek topic. What I want you to think about now is how we could make a difference. Right, how can we make a difference with our topic? A couple of minutes to think of ideas. Take, take that um, Take this down. Why would we want to take this down? Change it. So we've just finished the butterfly line, so what can we do? Change it to the Greeks. Layla, how else could we make a difference? Like reading and food festivals. We could have a reading and food festival. What do you mean by that? Different kind of like Greek foods and like for reading festivals, like get all the younger children into the hall and we tell them stories about what we've learned and how we've done it. So who is that making a difference for? Like us and the younger ones. Once I started saying to them, how are you going to make a difference? They knew they wanted to work with younger children. They knew they wanted to do something for the parents because they were leaving year six. And I think that was how they've turned this topic into something that interested them and got out of it the storytelling festival. Then you would move on to stage three, which is together we are more. So that's where you're looking at um, who's got similar goals, who wants to do the same things, looking at getting on their bus stop for common ground. Right, can I stop you for a minute? Joe's just come up with a really good idea because he's saying although you're all working together to sort out what you need, resources and everything, he was saying, would it be a better idea for once we've got all these ideas, for each house to be in charge of a different area. Yeah. Tell me what you think, James. Well, we, like, we're like coming up with ideas of like, games, games and that. Right, so is your house really quite focused on yeah. games? Yeah. And this house have really gone down the route of food, haven't you? Yeah, you've all started talking about food. Sapphire, have you been talking about anything in particular? The, uh, like the pottery and the art. The pottery and the art. And Ruby? Dancing, Dancing and singing. They don't have any words, they're just doing actions. Then in stage four, you start to actually create your making a difference project, your MAD project. So, you know, you're generating the success criteria. Then you move on to stage five, which is looking at the planning and resources. So the children actually plan what's happening and they're clear about what the end result and the outcome will be. Think about it, if you're going to have if someone maiming it, 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 if someone maiming it with a hand on it, do you only think it will be a bit hard because you would have to... It will be hard, but it will be fun for the kids. How will you know you've achieved what you want to achieve? Ask questions. So by questioning children, yeah, to test their knowledge? I think it, it can be quite scary to sort of say to the children, right, you know, what's important to you, you're going to plan the topic, how are you going to make a difference? Because what you're asking the children to do is come up with, you know, the lesson plans really, and the outcome. Um, I think what's important 
in terms of the process and motivating staff, again, I, I guess it's similar to the children. First and foremost, I think it's starting where the staff are because we've got a, a, a large staff with a range of experiences and for some of them, they're kind of already on this bus, if you like, and they believe in it, they understand it and they appreciate that it, it will make a difference. Mm-hmm. How do you think this approach is different to what we're doing at the moment? Because it's really getting them to kind of really question um, why something is relevant to their learning and how they can then go on to make a difference. And about a bit of ownership. Sorry, yeah, yeah, I was just about to say, yeah. it's, it's them setting their own success criteria. Yeah. They're right. saying what, what's important to them, why it's important, and what they're going to do about it, yeah. as opposed to just saying, to just this is your topic, it. this is the question we're doing, this is what you need to learn, yeah. here's the stuff you've learned it it's right. It's ex- extending their learning, isn't yeah. it? They go on to then do a project and then really make a difference in school or outside of school and at home. I think that's really important is sort of getting them to actually think about what impact it can have. And I mean, it can it can be something as small as making an impact on just the class to making a difference in a much wider effect, whether it be the school community or the local community. Oh, this is yes. pathetic. When you move to stage six, it's looking at building optimism as you go, which is developing a positive reviewing strategy with the children and turning negatives into positives. Um, Then moving on to step seven is building resilience. Um, So looking for evidence to support the children of where they can build resilience and get through things. Are you all right? No. No, No, what's happened? It's like too much on its crack. You've put too much Marjok on its crack. So what do you think you could do to fix the problem? Start again. So what are you gonna do the next time when you start again? Only, Start, take, only, uh, only put it on like a pattern, maybe. Put it on as a pattern. Yes, yeah, so for like one, like stripe, 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 like that. We instead of putting them all slant ways. Okay. And then ask the other person's opinion as well to see if like if we actually need the gap or we will just move it out. Okay, so thinking about it, it more, sm- being more methodical mm-hmm. and doing a pattern. Yeah. Is that what you yeah. mean? Yeah. Yeah. How's it going at the minute? It's going really well. The kids are really enjoying it and I think they're getting a lot out of it. So what what in particular do you think they're getting out of it? I think they like it more that they've been involved from the start. They've said what's important. They've set the outcome. They've said how they want to make a difference. And I think it's really engaged, sort of the attention-seeking boys, because they're on task, they're, they're engaged in what they're doing and it's their project. I might be a doctor when I'm well because I'm going to be good, I'll put some costs on. What a cool idea! But also it's, you know, just the quiet girls who would never work with the attention-seeking boys are working together and the girls are taking the lead. Can you, can you give us an example of some of the things they came up with? For making a difference? Yeah, in, in your Greek topic, say, you know, very specific All things sorts. that they I wanted. Because we had the hook of the Hancock as well, that gave them the interest, yeah. didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So in my class, they came up with things like small things for some children, just like, I want to make a Greek vase. Mm-hmm. You know, and a lot of them were saying, oh, I want to do this art activity. But they were also saying, you know, we want to find out about the stories. So all of our literacy has been involving Greek leaders, Greek heroes, and the children have been much more engaged in it because they said, oh, that's what we want to do. Mm -hmm. Um, and then they've said they want to make a difference by putting on a storytelling festival which is the next step for us which is all their speaking and listening it's sort of taking the responsibility Dip that in and when the pancake things come out, you just spread it over. Half an hour into the storytelling festival, right? We we'll swap over so you do costumes. Which one should I show that one? The year sixes have been doing a project on the Greeks and on storytelling. So they're all set up at eight different stations around the hall now. Pandora found a great big job right in the furthest corner of the altar. Suddenly he heard a whisper. They are quite safe in here, my dear, he boomed. I can feel them all wriggling around. We are decided to ask here for advice. 
When the next child is born, you must play a trick on Cronus. The things the children get out of it, the confidence they develop, the, the speaking and listening skills that you see, the, the range of coverage and subjects is just amazing that it goes down a completely different route that you wouldn't think of. Do you just want to know what everything is? Yeah, we have to. They're cherry tomatoes. Do you want some bread with a Greek dip with cucumber in? No. Somebody put that a negative was the children didn't understand the name of the characters. And somebody, and this links me over to you, because somebody actually put a positive was that people were explaining who the characters were and the children liked it. So that negative, we've got the positive. We know how to solve that problem. By doing this topic with the children, the children's results have improved, the children have met their targets, we've covered what we needed to do on the curriculum, plus the children have enjoyed it and they have ownership of the topics and they've made a difference. Does it stop there? Tell me what we could do. All people. We could do things with them. Right, so Margaret Collins' house is the old people's home down the road. What right. could we do? We could read stories to them and do like cooking with them. Is there people who would be interested in going down and doing that? What do you think, John? Yes? A big priority for us as a school next is to look at how we can use this tool with, with our parents and the wider community because I think, you know, developing the, the skills of resilience and responsibility and leadership in that real sense of making a difference within our children is just the first step along the journey. That has to be constantly reinforced with those same kinds of messages from home. Um, so for us as a school, a huge focus for us next year will be on working with our parents.